following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, folks. Because of the, the number of uh, questions I had and, and emails and texts, I, I just need to go to the stocks. Let me just say that the I'll run this real quick. The Dow's up 14 at 35,327. Uh, the nine period moving average is still stubbornly above the 14. But look at this the SP. The SP right now is down uh, five and a half at 4494. Uh, the nine period moving average finally crossed negative. You can see in the daily chart right there. Uh, look right there. <clears throat> look at the QQQ, same thing. QQQs are down uh, 1.62 at 370.32. Nine period moving average to negative. It's only the, oh no, I shouldn't say that. Let's see where the IWM is. It was the R, RTY, which is the futures contract, had actually flipped pink. Early this morning, then it went back to green. Both of them are green. I think it's turning pink very soon. Can the general, that's the Dow, lead without the troops? Nope, I don't think so. It's going to be dragged lower, but it's really good because uh, the Dow is the Dow 30, and I think it's just the perfect mix for the environment we're in. We'll see whether I'm correct with that. But we do have a short position from the August 1st high. Um, we'll see if that's going to last. Looking at the SMHs. SMHs are down uh, 1.42 at 151.90. Uh, we are actually short from the 159 area, and we, we also have the inverted uh, short position um, along in the short position. Uh, it, 161.17 was the high on the 31st of July. I think this is telling us a bit of a story here. If the cemetery, let's see what NVIDIA is. NVIDIA, I had a question about that. Yeah, NVIDIA to me, it looks like it's stalling, making those dreaded H patterns. Just done another one. It's down 12 at 433.71. Um, I like to put these together. One is this crazy NVIDIA, which is under PE, and you've got GE, which of course is a split. But it's at 113. And look how nice. Look at this beautiful. It's like a little a worm crawling up the tree. You can just see just tiny little moves up. Higher highs and higher lows. One bar, two bars rest before it makes a new peak. It should pull back at some point soon. But it's fabulous action on GE. Um, just the one is I'm talking about uh, PE ratios. Okay. I need to do this uh, quickly. Silver is trading down. Uh, no, actually, no. It's now turned up a little bit. It's point. 08 up at 22.89, lousy chart pattern. Same with gold. Uh, not not a big deal, but oh, now it's come back a little bit. Gold is now only uh, down a fraction. It, it's holding well, but it's not acting well. Holding and acting are two separate things. So um, I wanted to show you the dollar, and this really is the story. The dollar trying to rally. It's not. It's struggling here. It made a very quick peak. A B C D. Underneath the previous high of July, in July at about 103.20s so or 30s, and here it is at 102.30. It needs a whole dollar to even, it needs to get to 103.16 to get to the 200 period moving average. Peak D in the dollar, UUP is a, a leg, E, is it a peak E? Yeah, probably a peak E today at resistance. That's the power shares DB US dollar bull. Looking at crude oil, here we go, crude oil. <clears throat> Is up strongly at 84.04, up a dollar 12, starting to break that resistance area. And that's what I've been saying. I think actually people are talking about crude oil just being stuck. I think crude oil is moving very nicely to the upside. Well, it is. You can see it is. So yeah, that's that's an important aspect. And if you're looking at the TLT, I'm still going to see whether or not we've got a Chapman Wave Volume price climax reversal on the 3rd of May at 94.54. It's at 97.04. Very nice move, considering it was just in a week it plummeted from the 100 level down to 94. So this is a nice bounce. I don't see it in the same category. I do think that there's a little bit more to go on the bounce, and then it starts to retest the 95 area. That's my thinking right now. So uh, we're looking at, um, let's see, I want to, do, I, I'm done with all those. Now, questions that came in. Let me just do them one. Greg, GDRX. GDRX. GDRX is the Gorilla Holdings Enterprise B2B consumer brands. <clears throat> nice candle today, considering.
that it actually slipped to 764 and now it's at 839. Uh, but it made a peak C1, C2 top in the daily chart. A leg C, possibly a peak C this week. We'll, we'll see if it's able to climb above 940, 946. No, I'm sorry. 937, 937, 938 starts your leg D. Yes, I, so my analysis of this is that I've had this kind of on a list that I, I look at periodically and I hadn't looked at it for a little while. Um, it's in an area that I don't understand personally, but it's, it's an area that sees buying and then it sees no buying. Then it sees buying and no buying. This is the B2B, this is consumer in the consumer brand of A. ACCO, I'm just guessing now. ACCO. Yeah, Echo Brands. ACCO is another one uh, in the in the brands business. I don't know about B2B, but it's in the brands. And I've had it on my list for some time. Um, 618, 618, 618. This is a C and that's a D. And look at this big decline at peak D. It almost looks like the same chart formation. I'm uh, just doing this by memory. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I actually remember the, the ACC, CO, the symbol is Echo Brands. It, it's branding of products. And a leg D in the weekly chart. I'm going to be pulling back a little bit. I'm, I've said to subscribers, be, be really careful here. This is a market that one by one, each of the in key indices is starting to roll over. I don't actually see leadership. I see individual stocks maybe. I'd be real careful. So this might be a warning. It's down 7, 8% at minus 48 at 557. That's not what you asked. You asked about it. i got to look up the name again, GDRX, GDRX. And I'm just saying almost, oh, don't put it there. i <laughs> put it over here. There you go. Okay. GDRX. It's almost the same kind of pattern. Uh, Gorilla Holdings Enterprise, um, I'm down 43 cents at 831. I'd say hold off. I might be wrong, but if I'm wrong, I still think you'll be able to get it in this area at some point again as it pulls back. I actually think it's going to fill the 750 to $7 area over the next week or so. So I'm just saying hold off. And the other question was RDW. RDW is? RDW is? Uh, Red Wire Corporation, IP Solar Power, 3D uh, Printing. So I'm going to put this one together with DD, with DDD, which I haven't looked at for a little while. Whoa, just as well, because 3D Systems, one that we had huge profit once upon a time. I haven't touched it for ages. Just use it as kind of a measure of, of that whole area. No, this has gone from in a straight line down. It's gone from the 11 area down to 753. I'm not going to put it. I don't know if they're in the same area. It just says 3D. So uh, let's just go back again. RDW. I'm going to say the same thing. Hold off. It's a 330, uh, 336. I think your risk is greater than your reward. So hold off. If it can get to 320 to 310, yell, give me a yell. And we'll look at it again together. I might be wrong. And I'm wrong if by f Monday. Give it give it all the way till Monday. It's eight. Five right now, down seven cents. I'll be right back. We've got a lot of stocks to look at. Natural gas was the next thing. NG, natural gas. I'll be right back. Whoa, big move in natural gas. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So if you thank A to B in the den, um, yes, uh, SSYS, which is uh, uh, strategist. So what do do? I should know by now. I've followed it for years. Strategist um, uh, Limited. I, in fact, I remember I was in Israel once and I was uh, just some friends were talk, uh, talking and this one person I, I said something that, uh, that she works for this 3D company. I said, oh, what's the name? She said, Stratasys. I said, oh, uh, didn't they just get taken over by an American company or something like that? Uh, do you still have your job? She said, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a long time ago. I think that must have been on the way in 2021. Maybe it was before that. And then it went all the way to 55, 56. And now uh, it's down in the, uh, the teens. At 15, 60, it's already been down the tens. So this is bad. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm saying just hold off on those. Now, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. I had a question in the den about uh, natural gas, but I just wanted to go to blank for a moment. Blank is uh, charging stations. See this big spike and see how it's giving back. Blink charging company. Always on my list. In fact, do I have it on my screamer list? Um, no, I took it off because it was just not acting very well at all. Uh, and then suddenly it gets this. And that's the thing about the charging stations. You have this hot spot that just suddenly goes whoosh to the upside, but they don't seem to be holding. And that's really the issue. Looking out, when this eventually starts to trade in the 850, it's at 671. On a weekly basis, it starts to close in the 8th. Then I think you've made that U-turn. Then you've got that cup formation. It's really more like a bowl formation. I'll draw it into the chart right here. And now you're looking at, instead of lower lows, you're looking at higher lows and higher highs. But you haven't got there yet. This is a good move to go to 725 today. Trading now at 668. That's a big plummet from the high. I, I just watch it real closely. Um, so now yeah, that was the question. So, okay, natural gas. So I was doing quite a bit of work on this over the last couple of days. I almost had it for my subscribers as a as a trade in the UNG, but it has this way of failing that it doesn't hold the gains. But the fact that it made this um, three, uh, three, 38.2 pullback percent in the FIB numbers, and then it started to make a U-turn yesterday, I like that. The move today was very quick. I thought, all right, well, I don't want to buy a gap up. 
in this particular instrument because either it works fantastic and then you say, oh, my God, I missed it, or you get in and then, shoosh, like a, bl a, bl a blink, you suddenly see it pulling back intraday. I think this is the best move we've got. Now look at this. You remember the cup formation I was talking about or bowl formation that I was talking about in the weekly chart of blink? Look at this. There you can see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You want to make this pivot point. In fact, the pivot point will be this dreaded H pattern right here. So that becomes your ictus to the upside. And that becomes the clue that if you can start to close on a weekly basis above this high, in the high of the 19th of, the week of the 19th of May, of 2.926, and this is the continuous contract. If you listen to this in a few days' time, it's a flow, it's a moving uh, number because it's a continuous contract. So I'm looking at that, and now the high today so far is 3.018. It's trying to hold. It's now, you remember in the cup formation, this could become uh, a Chapman Wave cup and ladle, being this a brand new A or an old E, we won't know for a little while. But the MACD is turned up. Stochastic is looking better at 69. On balance volume is rallying. Nine is crossed yesterday over the 14 period. Moving average turned green. There are a lot of good things, but the week is young. And we've still got a whole day and a half to go. Uh, two days, two and a half days to go. And we've at least attempted to break above and now to hold above that high that was made on the continuous contract of 292. Forget about the monthly chart. When you go from almost 12 down to uh, the twos, you know, you've got a little problem there. So I would I would put it this way. This entire move down at this particular point, anyone who wanted to buy, I think, has bought and is probably out and said, I, I can't take this anymore. I'm done. I believe that if, if natural gas, now I have to go to UNG because a lot of people don't use the futures, they use only the price of a chart that you can get as if it's a stock or an ETF or a fund. So this is a brand, as I typed in yesterday, that was an A. This is an extension of the A. But because it didn't go to the starting point of the buy signal, which is way down here in UNG, the United States Natural Gas Fund, in the daily chart on the 1st of June, the low was 587. I may as well put that in because I think it's going to be very important. 5.87 on the six one two three <clears throat> and it goes green because it actually went all the way to a d it fulfilled the chapman wave buy mode how many charts have you seen go to d's they can go to e and f but at least the d to complete a buy signal to buy mode obligation um and then it pulls back trough a trough b let me just type that in here a actually i'm going to get rid of this whenever uh, um, a technical indicator has had its use i just kind of get rid of it in this case, the one-to-one. -one. There were so many one-to-ones here. There's a little bit of an extension. Just let's get, get rid of that. All I can say is that in the cup formation, if you take a long time and you get the lopsided gravy cup by making the low below the midpoint of what would be visually the midpoint, that says this is a brand new start to a move if it closes two out of three times above that left side high. All right, in this case, UNG's high was on the uh, 26, right, 26th of June, 783. <clears throat> Today's low is 783, and that just says a retest is good, but a close below it says you can now treat that as a fulcrum. It's going to wiggle up and down like a, like a, like a, in the, in the futures. Look at this. This is the line that we were looking at a long time ago, a long time ago, uh, right here. There's the 4130, very long-term horizontal trend. Look how many times we've been looking. Even today, we went above. We couldn't. We hung around. It's like a 200-period moving average, but this is just a horizontal straight line. And then it went to this peak B minus in the dreaded H pattern to pull back. So it's starting to fail. It's really struggling. Quite, it's really struggling a lot. This is the E mini. I'm just talking chart to chart. How how a, a particular I call them icons, a trend line or a 200 period moving average or a doji can, whatever it is, becomes the focal point whenever you get back to it. Um, and now what we're looking at is going back to the the UNG. What we're looking at is <clears throat> that become became a trend line of a shorter term, just on a daily basis, the trend line of importance, 483.
All right, so we can go up and down and up and down. That's going to be the thing. The further away up you can push away from it, the better it is. In the weekly chart, you made a kind of a bull cup and a little handle here. So I like it, and I like the fact that the MACD is really strongly with the price. No, I'm sorry. I said it wrong. I'm not impressed with the fact that the MACD has really strongly and the price never moved commensurate with that. But now it is finally moving up. It's recognizing and you you almost got the nine period moving average about to close over the pink, uh, over the the black 14 period moving average. The elastic form is before the on-balance form is not very good. So it's one step at a time. The question is looking out, where do I think it's going? I think natural gas first big stop will be um, at ten dollars to ten fifty. That big dog on the outside looking out a couple of weeks. Tigers. Candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So we're back, and I just wanted to say that UNG, this is the United States National Gas Fund, the pattern that I'm looking at in the weekly chart suggests that it could take until about August, the, uh, until the end of August, before we actually break sharply above the high that was a closing basis, uh, the high that was made right there, that was on the week of the 30th of June at, uh, let's just see what that is, at 7.72. Right now we are above that. So we need to close above it. We need to close at least two out of three weeks above that to say, hey, starting to make 
higher lows and higher highs. But the, the target that I'd be looking at in August, if this continues to rally as it does, and I like the action so far, uh, I'd like the stochastic to actually be at 80%, not 76 but that's good. Um, and that would be the high of 9.99. Let's call it 10 bucks right here. And that was the week of, I think it was March. Let me just put 9.99. How did they not make 10, huh? All right, there it is. That was the week of the 3rd of March. All right, so that would be the time. That's a long way to go, and it means that all the... Uh, all the action within the UNG is based on finally seeing, um, you're finally seeing the kind of liquidation, I'm using that very purposefully, of uh, resources so that you now are stretching it and you need, you're coming into the winter months, you need natural gas. So I like a lot of things that are going on, and I really think the 740 to 710 area is very strong support. That's a lot in, in, in points and like that. But I just think looking at, this is the first time I can say, I think that the the cup formation that's in the daily and the bowl formation in the weekly is finally seeing buying that is sustained because that pullback uh, six, six sessions or so ago to the 6.60 area, um, it just it could have gone and filled the gap. It didn't do that. It's using everything for upside action. Good. I hope that, that helps you uh, for that question. Next question was, uh, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go? Um, yeah, I thought I'd do that. Um, I see there's a stock today. I, I've had this on my list of screamers for subscribers. I didn't actually go into it because it's just moved so quickly. Uh, Mankind Biotech Therapeutics Products for Diabetes, Pulmonary Hypertension uh, had a huge move. It kind of doodled around here in the in the low fours and then went under four and then it started to go very nicely. This is almost like that GE chart in the weekly. It just made high highs, high lows, very steady. Then it started to have much wider uh, parameters intraday. And then all of a sudden from the 460s where it was three days ago, bam, today it hits $5.75. And that's a new leg B testing the left side high. These things, when they move, they are so quick. This is Mankind Core MNKD. I have so many of these microbiotechs that he, whew, when they move, they move to the upside. When they move to the downside, well, 523 was the high the week of the 3rd of March. Well, 3rd of March was also the natural gas high of 999, the UNG, that is. Uh, and today's high is uh, 575. So 575, 573 made a new recovery high. That's and that started off, no, this has to be an alternate count because it's made a cup formation without taking the starting point of the previous buy mode. Um, if it did that, then this would be absolutely a fresh leg B. But this way, I've got to say, hmm, maybe it's just an extension of E uh, going to an F. And then this is a brand new B. F says, be careful. B says, are you kidding? Every single pullback. But we don't do that. We use the daily, and the daily is giving us an A. B, C, D, and a big spiral to leg E. On balance volumes overbought. MACD is very good. Stochastics only at 76%. Relative strength is actually weak. And the nine period moving average is fantastically over the 40 period moving average. So there you are. So, okay. So, um, so mankind, I wasn't asked about it, but it showed up. And I wanted to show you something else. I, I thought I had drawn it in. I might have drawn it in and then lost it when, when my. Hey, hey, hey. There you are. When my when I had to shut down the other day because something was happening. Okay. Look at this. Left side, right side, price, time match, fulcrum, plumb line in the middle. You've got the one week early and isn't that a, I didn't do this. I, I can't remember if I had done it some time ago and I lost it. I do remember doing something like it. Maybe it was on the previous one, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is acting really well. The trouble is it's a leg C now on the monthly chart. There's an overlapping wave for the peak C way back in 2021 up in the sixes. 
I'm watching this closely because in the biotech area, especially the diabetes area, especially since Lily yesterday had the, a lily of a move there. Isn't that amazing? Today, it's pulling back just a little bit in leg C, maybe a peak C, and then it can go to D, and then it has a little bit more of a, a digestive phase. Um, diabetes and, and uh, diet. But I think they're going to find something with the diet. There were a couple of heart issues. Um, we'll see what happens. But in the long term, large pharma is really coming alive here. Uh, Eli Lilly, why did I put a Y? It should be um, Eli Lilly. Uh, edit E L I. E L Y is the guy that um, from the golfing company, right? E L Y. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's do a couple of things here. So I've got some of those questions. SMCI. So this is one I did all the notations and everything. And I thought this I've got to put on my list. This was like months ago, about three months ago, maybe two and a half months ago. It was somewhere over here. And I thought this is unbelievable. This is super micro company semi semiconductors. And I thought, how did I miss this? It was in the investors business daily. I just never took note of it. And it finally went to a peak D two days ago, went to leg D. Yesterday was a peak D. Today it's down 85 points, 24% at 262. Obviously not. In the, in the weekly chart, it's only leg. It isn't the peak. I have to wait for a lower high next week. And super micro leg D in the weekly, in the monthly chart. And that's the reason why I'm saying I think that the semiconductors are telling us a little bit of a story here, not, not a big story, but a little bit of a story saying there's some shorter term weakness and it should filter into the general market. But so far, the Dow is up 16, as if he's only up uh, down two and, a, two and a quarter. <clears throat> uh, it's very specific to some areas, and I think this is the area that we're looking at. I had a question where did, oh, FXI, FXI. Um, yes. This FXI, so just be real careful. It made that peak D. I, I was about to put a down arrow. I said, and you wait for the close yesterday. We got it. So it's in a sell mode. Uh, weekly chart is pulled back into the 61.8% uh, uh, retracement. So the 28.56. I just hold off a little bit. I think, I think the um, China shares. We'll have a bit of a rally a little later on, but right now they're really kind of stuck. Neo was the other one. Neo made a peak G, and I think this is a peak G. Over the 14, and it is a weekly leg C. So Neo is a Chinese company, electric cars. I'll be right back. Dow's up 11, S&P's down 3. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, folks, we're back. We're looking at MDX dispensation and doing mining. I've followed this a little bit lately. Um, periodic, I uh, follow it. Well, Tom seems to do it uh, often enough over the years. Um, it's, a, it's a stock that I, I just like to follow because I, we've never actually owned it. And for subscribers to my opening call, we've got some others in the gold area. But one of the things that I'm looking at here is that this pattern of the arch formation with the doji candle right there on the uh, at July the 26th at 9.20. Um, turns around, pulls back, very, didn't go to a D, and doesn't even have a phantom peak to be able to make that, and pulls back and holds the 200-period moving average of 722. But look at the way the 9-period moving average is still so weak under the 14. Look at the way the MACD is still so weak. Look at the way the stochastic is flattening out in the in the 8% area. And that just says to me, even if there is a bounce, there's going to have to be a little bit more work done and if it takes out the 200-period moving average support of 722 and closes under 7.08, that is called at $7. Then that 666 low that was made, 6.66 on the 10th, 7th, on the 7th of July, will become the focus. If it takes that out, you're looking at a much deeper correction. This, so this is a really important level right now. <clears throat> um, even if it balances, I'm just saying 7 20 is your initial support. If it starts to take that out, I'd be watching closely because if that weekly 14-period uh, moving average is pierced by the nine, green 9-period nine moving average, <clears throat> I think you can go quite a bit lower in this arch, very steep, very quick, single leg A up to the to the upside and a potential failure. So and it made a $10 round number high back in April, I think it was. So I'm just watching this one closely because it, it does tell me, look, if you put this together with, uh, let's go to GOLD, which is um, uh, Barrick Mining ABX used to be the symbol. Oh, don't tell me. How many, I don't know how many thousand times I've typed this in. Um, all right, I'll have to do it again. But in the meantime, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. What do we look for in the chat wave? Peak D, that's your buy signal to buy mode obligation. At D or higher, that's where you can get a sharp pullback, especially at a D. That's what you've done. Nice action. This is a little bit better. This is trading at 16.54. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's just change that. That should be an A, not an up arrow. That's, that's an, I'll get it out sometime. A, B, C to the 200 period moving average. D just above it. Can't hold it. Peak D starts to fail and plummets all the way back, almost goes to the 15s. Yesterday's low was just under 16, and here it is, 16.54. Nice action. And that's why I'm saying that individual stocks are doing different things in all the different sectors. And because of that, my, my impression right now is that we are under pressure overall in the general market, and therefore you've got to be either selective or just building a nice, we're building a nice cash position, and we've got quite a few shorts uh, one is crazy because it made all-time highs 
it's in a sector that's just been absolutely on fire. I'm not sure I should use the word on fire. Anyway, in Fugo. Um, and it's holding very well. We had a split position and one got taken out for a small loss. And now this other one's an even tinier loss if it gets taken out, but it's still in place. The others are acting quite nicely, our other shorts. So <laughs> we're watching this closely. And as I say, sometimes I just have this thing where I just... I've, all my technical indicators are in place, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I have to do the work. I have to do what I have to do. So we'll see about that. Meantime, back at the ranch, you can see this tussle that's going on. That turnaround yesterday. Oh, and now I think I finished all the questions. I got that. 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 And I got that. Yeah. Oh, and there's one other that I'll get to if I have time. So, okay, uh, well, well, another another quick question came in. Is it a quick question? Okay, good. thank you. My pleasure. Uh, okay, now, what I wanted to tell you is this. Um, oh, Johnny says, did you say natural gas was going to $10 or UNG? I was saying if. Remember, there are always ifs in the market. We don't, we're, not, we're not the market. We are just following the market. Remember, if we were the market, we wouldn't even be here. Um, I'm just saying that in my outlook that I have right now, based on everything I'm looking at, and the question came in, uh, a couple of people said, uh, we're along uh, U and G from certain levels. Where do I think the action is? And one question was, What's your intermediate term out? Intermediate term means I go to the weekly chart and I'm looking out. It could only be three weeks. That could be intermediate term because it's a price. It's either price or time or time or price. And I'm looking at this as both a time and a price action because if it's quick, it's going to buy the August, the, uh, the week of the 25th. We'll have this at least by the end of August. We will test 9.99. But with the speed that we've had of this big move up, we've had it before. If it's sustained, it's going to continue. And this is exactly in August going to September. If you look at it historically, um, look at this. Yeah, this is no, this is not right. This is this is a bad year. That was December of 2020. That's when it really took off. Um, that's the United States gas fund. So I, I'm just saying that you would expect historically that the opportunity for the winter months to see natural gas rise just makes common sense. That's all I'm saying. And this fits in that whole panoply of, of, of uh, the sequences and the analysis that I gave you, all the different tools. So I like what I'm seeing. I like the fact that um, there's, there was good volume with follow through today. That's on balance volume as well as regular volume. I just like it. I'm thinking it's good, good, and I'm saying very clearly, 740 to 720, maybe seven dollars is that should be the lowest it goes on any pullback this in the in this week and a half that we're looking at two weeks. That's critical for takeoff. Ready for takeoff. Um, we're looking at uh, I did that. Oh, this is what I want you to do. So within the context of all the different tools that I have. Um, I want to just review this. I had a couple of questions about it. Some people said, oh, we just found out about your 914. What the heck is it, et cetera, et cetera. I will at some point have a, um, I will have a class on it, and I might have it very soon. It will be included in just a couple of techniques that I'm going to spend a lot of time on, like a proper workshop. I'm going to do it for subscribers, but you can become a subscriber. You can even do it and take your uh, 29 or 30 days free of my newsletter and then get your money back and do all my webinars, etc., that are right there posted. But I am going to have it. And what what is the question for me? <clears throat> the question is when or if the nine period moving average in the daily Dow chart starts to cross negative. You see the way it hasn't made a vicious turn down. It's like a slow M formation, a rollover. That's just saying to me, I've got to put into the pie, the chances are that within the context of all the different indices that we've seen, and I'm going to do this now in a moment because I want to go to the break, we're going to see that we've had a, a considerable digestive phase in some of the key stocks. 
they might be done when the Dow finally turns negative and then maybe we start up. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. If I do this a webinar later in the month, uh, I'll, I'll show you. This is my left side, right side price time match. Look, it did this. It did the first one in the, in the 10 minute chart. Now I have no idea if it's going to work, but I have uh, 4,500 by 11.40 today as a target based on this arch formation, left side, right side price time match, the same sort of thing. All right, let's get back to the story before we wrap it up for the day. Uh, great program coming up. Don't forget, Steve comes up. I don't even have to tell you about all the great people here. QQQ question came in. So I wanted to do this. First of all, Amazon is starting to fill the gap, starting to pull back. This is what I meant that this rollover could see some of the stocks give back really good gains, have a decent digestive. Look at this Apple down 215. I got a peak D with a dreaded H pattern. It's pulling back. Uh, 175 is kind of the target. First real support that we're looking at. We can go on like this. Where's the QQ? Where's the target for the QQQs? I would say if 365 is taken out, then the whole area of 362 to 358 will be the next target. But this could just be one step at a time. And I'm saying it's so a 369, 367 to 365 is my next target on the downside for the QQQs. We'll see what happens. So with that said, uh, just a review. Yes, 
as I said, we, we, are, we are short the Dow from the exact high. We've got a long position from October of 20, 2020. We've got a position from, no, that was March, and then we've got a position still from 2023 from the law of October. Uh, we have trading positions in and out, and the trading position says we are short uh, from the August uh, 1st high. Um, you know, it's just you, you never know. We just do the do the job that you can. Uh, and the SMH is the same sort of thing. We are short from just the day a day after the peak was made. And we'll see if that's going to work out. Yeah, we were short from the 159s and we've got the three times a long short position. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Have a great rest of the day and stay tuned for Steve Rhodes and all the great programming coming up. <laughs>